Hello and welcome to my updated 1 to 99 and 120 thieving guide for 2020. So when you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax and enjoy. As per usual, I start off with the useful experience boosts for the skill. First off, the wise perk which can be created with the invention skill and put on any offhand to bring along when thieving. This can give you 1-4% to bonus experience depending on the rank of the invention perk, with a cap of 50,000 per day. Please keep in mind that there are many ways of creating this perk inside a gizmo shell. Pulse scores can stack from 2 to 10%, torso instant sticks can be stacked for 2% bonus experience, a refer friend scroll which is quite an expensive bonus experience item gives you 10% bonus experience. The wisdom aura which can be bought for loyalty points if you have some spirit gives you 2.5% and the best time to train thieving if you don't have anything else to do is double experience weekend because you'll get 100% bonus experience plus stacks like the refer friend scroll. If you cap in your clan every week, you can have a boost up to 6% extra experience in all skills, which I'll leave a guide for in the description below. And if you have level 116 archaeology, you can get an additional 2% bonus experience with the Inspire Love Relic. As for useful items, first off, if you're level 99 thieving and you're watching this guide, this is a very useful cape as it notes all thieving loot. There's however no use for this cape if you aren't going to be doing anything else than safe cracking. The Arty Cloak 3 or better increases the thieving success rate anywhere in RuneScape. If you don't want to take damage when doing thieving, if you're a skiller or something of the sort, you can use a Feather Fingered Necklace to take zero damage when caught. These can be bought with a Grand Exchange. If you have 54 Hunter, you can use Gloves of Silence which increase your pickpocketing rate by 5%. If you have Invention Unlock, you can get yourself a Soul in a Box, which aids in pickpocketing for a minute per use. Keep in mind, this item does require the Nomad's Elegy quest to be complete and to acquire. If you have done Pyramid Plunder, you will most likely have the Black Ibis Outfit, giving 1% bonus experience per piece and a total 5% with a set bonus if all 4 pieces are equipped. If you don't have this set, I would not recommend going for it by doing Pyramid Plunder. It's a waste of your time. If you've completed the Plague's End quest, you'll have the Traherian Exoskeleton set. This decreases the chance of taking damage and gives you 5% extra chance at pickpocketing at level 75 Thieving plus Hunter. If you own the Black Ibis outfit and have it in your bank, this outfit also uses that experience boost as well. If you're going to be doing Prif Thieving or Dwarf Traders, the Seren spells and prayers are going to be useful. If you have loyalty points spare, you can get yourself a 5 finger discount aura which increases your success chance by 3 to 15%. That being said, the loyalty points required to get the higher tier version of this aura is really not worth it unless you're going to be doing dwarf traders all the way up to 200 million experience. If you need to have a thieving level boost, you can use a magpie or abyssal lurker familiar with the scrolls. And camouflage outfits have multiple benefits which I'll cover now as they are the most important outfit for thieving. To get pieces of this incredibly useful outfit for thieving, you're going to have to be lucky through Treasure Hunter or through some kind of Jagex temporary event that gives out skilling item pieces. If not, you're going to have to create the outfit using fragments, being camouflage fragments. At level 80 thieving and level 20 invention, pieces can be crafted per 3600 camo fragments to get one peach every time. You start obtaining these fragments after level 70 thieving. Now the regular camouflage outfits, being the Desert, Keldegrim or Profidnas version have a variety of good buffs already, but you can also combine these three if you have the full sets into a Master Camouflage outfit. The Master Camo outfit is simply a better version that has all the effects of the regular versions but enhances some of them and adds some things here and there. To keep it simple, this outfit is great for pickpocketing and thieving in general and also gives you a variety of teleports to use and uses existing outfits bonuses. That's all you need to know. Let's move on. If you ever need to boost your thieving level for a quest that allows it, or for some kind of training method, here are a variety of thieving level boosts. Keep in mind the God Banner is one of the best because it lasts the longest, and pull scores can also boost your thieving level. If you ever want to do quests, there are so many quests in this game that give you thieving experience. This is not even the entire list, just something to note for those quest-hungry people out there. Doing quests for thieving experience is not a bad idea. 
In fact, if you're a fresh account watching this video, I recommend you do these quests to get your thieving level up first. Some of them are actually later down the line and you'll have to train in between, but levels 1 to 13, please do yourself a favor and do the Hazel Cult and Buyers and Sellers quest. The other quests on this list are important because you'll require them for training methods in this video, especially the safe cracking ones because this is now the meta for thieving training. If for whatever reason the quest requirements of the quests I just mentioned to do from levels 1 to 13 thieving are changed, just like what happened with my agility guide and the Grand Tree quest, I would recommend to train levels 1 to 5 at Pompous Merchants at the Taverly Lodestone. These will give you around 6,000 experience per hour. Levels 5 to 15 or 13 to 15, you're going to be training at bakery stalls in Lumbridge for around 11,000 experience per hour. This bakery store has a bank extremely close by, though there are a lot of NPCs at this so-called market, so if you do get seen you won't be able to thieve. If the guard sees you, you can hide behind the cart, but sometimes you'll just have to kill him instead. Now, this area is filled with NPCs, so it might be a little hard to thieve sometimes, but the bank is closer by. If you want an alternative, you can also thieve at the cavalry baking store instead. From levels 15 to 35, you're going to be training inside the Thieving Guild on the doors. This is incredibly fast thieving experience, but it does require you to complete the Buyer's and Seller's mini quest. This is why I recommend it to do the quest at the start of the leveling section. This is how you get to the Thieving Guild, by the way. Now let's get to the leveling section. Levels 15 to 35, you're going to be opening these doors to the north for 60,000 experience per hour. You'll have to open three doors and then hop worlds. What I would do is leave open the box for the world hop confirmation inside your world hop settings. This way you can simply click on a world and you will instantly hop. You can go to this interface by using escape and then clicking on hop worlds. If for whatever reason you need a lockpick, there's a shop inside the Thieving Guild or simply go to the Grand Exchange. Although you shouldn't need a lockpick for the Northern Doors and only for the Southern Doors which I'll cover in just a second. So at level 35 to 41 or 62, you can actually start opening the Southern Cell Doors as well. These should however require a lockpick. If you don't have a lockpick, you can buy one from the shop inside the Thieving Guild so don't worry takes about 5 seconds and then you're ready to go. These doors are incredible experience per hour and the experience per hour will go up as your thieving level goes up. You can do these to 41 if you're going to be doing the next method, but I really don't see any incentive to do that and you're better off doing the doors unless they're extremely crowded over the worlds. So the next method is actually slightly faster even at this thieving level because this method scales with your thieving level. The higher your thieving level, the more experience you'll get. Though it does require the feud quest and you'll need to talk to the big guy inside the thieving guild to get yourself a rubber blackjack. The one from the quest does not actually work. I tried it out and it just wouldn't let me do it. it took me about 10 minutes to figure out that I needed to talk to an NPC to get a rubber blackjack instead. You simply lure the caching volunteers inside the Thieving Guild to the door, you knock them out with your rubber blackjack, and then you loot them two or three times depending on how fast you are. This is fast experience than the doors, but it's way more click intensive, and honestly, I would just stick with the doors. They are way, way nicer to train on. Now I'm showing you this list of quests again because you need to complete these quests to get access to the next training methods, all the way up to level 99. These quests are the Buyers and Sellers, From Tiny Acorns, Lost Her Marbles, and a Guild of Her Own Mini Quests. After doing these quests, simply talk to the safe cracking trainer inside the Thieves Guild, and he'll give you a stethoscope and small loot bag which will require for safe cracking. From level 62 to 69, you're going to be using this route for safe cracking. Go to the first floor of Bob's house. Safe crack the safe, and once you do that, your loot bag will fill up and you might get some items. More on that later. After finishing this safe, you're going to go to the building to the north and enter inside, go up the stairs, and there's another safe. After completing this safe, go to the Edgeville Lodestone, go inside this building, go up the ladder, and there will be another safe to crack inside the corner of the building. After cracking this safe, go to Draenor and head inside the wise old man's house, go up the stairs, and another safe will be there to crack. After cracking this safe, go south towards the Wizard's Tower. Right click the beam and ascend to the top floor and then descend once to get to the third floor. On the third floor there will be two safes for you to crack. After finishing these two safes, teleport to the Draenor Lodestone and head towards the Draenor Manor. 
Inside the Dronal Manor, you'll find two different saves. Once you're done, repeat the run by going back to the Lumbridge Lodestone and doing all the saves over again. Now, that will be 200,000 experience per hour. But while you're doing this, you're also filling up your loot bag, which you can hand in for even more thieving experience, and you'll find random jewelry and items which you can't sell on the Grand Exchange, but you can hand them in for pilfer points or coins. So you also make a little bit of profit while thieving. You could do both of these things at these two NPCs inside the thieving guild. You can use these pilfer points to get yourself thieving upgrades, including a larger loot bag, which means less banking or less going to the thieving guild when full because it takes longer to fill it up. Every time you hand in your bag, you'll get a chunk of experience. Level 69 to 76, you're going to start in Al Karid. There will be a safe nearby the lodestone inside this building. After cracking this safe, go up the stairs outside of the skimmeter shop. There will be another safe up here. After you crack that safe, go ahead and teleport to the Menaforce Lodestone. Head north towards the Market District and there will be a safe here nearby a bank as seen. Crack this safe. There are actually more safes in Menaforce, but we're only going to be using this one as a sort of stop in between. After that, teleport to the Banding Camp Lodestone and start heading east. Inside this palace, you will find another two safes. After these two safes, return to Al Karid, and the safe you just used at the start of your run should almost be reset. Depending on your speed, it might take a little longer, or be ready to go straight away. Because I cracked some of the safes incredibly quickly, the safe was still open and I had to wait about 15 seconds. Level 76 to 83, you're going to be starting at Port Sarim. Go to the first floor of the jewelry store and there will be a safe there. After that, proceed by going to the battle axe store, going up the first floor there, and there will be another safe. You can actually see it on your mini-map if you're on the first floor of the jewelry store. After cracking those two safes in Port Sarum, head to Falador and go through the park. Go inside this building and there will be another safe. And don't be an idiot and keep closing the door like I did. After cracking this safe, go up the stairs to the building nearby the park. There will be another safe for you to crack here. After cracking this safe, go back down the stairs, head towards the mining guild, go through three doors, go up the stairs and crack the safe. After this safe, go back to Port Siren and repeat your run. Levels 83 to 90, you're going to start in your nil. Go inside the wall as seen and crack the safe. After this safe, go up the stairs inside the bar and there will be another safe in your nil. Then teleport to the Sears Village Lodestone and head towards Camelot Castle. Inside Camelot Castle, you'll find another two safes for you to crack. After cracking these two safes, teleport to Ardoing and head towards the market. You'll find your last two safes here. They will be inside two buildings. Follow the video as seen. This is the first safe, and inside the other building, the second safe will be located. After cracking this safe, head back to Yanil to restart your run. For levels 90 to 99 and beyond, if you simply want to AFK, this is the best method to do for around 530,000 experience per hour, excluding your loot bag experience. You want to head towards the Rogue's Castle inside the Deep Wilderness. In this location, there will be a total of three safes. You can get here by using the Wilderness Teleporters or by using the Edgeville Lever and walking there. Here you're going to be cracking these saves and in between you're just simply going to AFK until you wait for them to respawn. This can take a few minutes every time you've done all three but then you'll do one, you'll be doing the second and then the third and then you'll wait one or two minutes again. If you encounter a PK here, you shouldn't have anything of value on you, so sometimes they might just even ignore you, and if you do get attacked, just try and run outside, close the door behind you, and log out, or use the teleports to get out of there. When I did thieving here for the pet, I only encountered 2 or 3 PKers going from levels 90 to 110 thieving. And as long as you don't bring any items of value, you shouldn't be too worried about getting PK'd. If you do end up getting PK'd, I believe the only thing you lose are the items that give you coins or pilfer points being the jewelry items you get from safe cracking. You should keep your loot bag and your loot bag percentage filled. 
Now we're level 90 for more experience per hour, but super click intensive and annoying to set up because you need to lure the guards behind the doors inside this area and kill the Grim. You can also do Dwarf Traders for over 700,000 experience per hour. You'll require the Crystal Mask spell and Light Form Prayer from the Light Within quest. Personally, I would just stay away from these and just do the AFK safe cracking method from 90 onwards instead because it's just... It's just not worth the extra effort, trust me. AFK thieving is super, super pleasant. If you do want to get more experience and train actively, and you've done the Ritual of the Majorat quest, you can do active safe cracking from levels 94 onward. Though, I would recommend doing it from level 96 if you want to be able to do all the safes in the Zemiro Goals Fort. Now, thankfully, my buddy Durando and a clanmate of mine called Alien were able to help me out with the footage and testing because I haven't done the quest, and as you guys may know who watch my channel, I'm not a fan of quests. So you start the route off by going to Zenara, and then going to the Galaco cave using the fairy ring and then entering through the north exit. You then walk to the Zemurugos fort and do the three or four saves depending on your thieving level inside the fort. If your thieving level is 96 you should be able to do all four. Then after completing these three or four safes, you're going to teleport to the wilderness lodestone, use the wilderness teleporters and head towards the rogue's castle. Inside you'll find another three saves to crack. After doing so, you're going to go outside and operate Jenica's ring as seen in the video and then teleport to Childa using your Slayer Cape or use your portable fairy ring. Inside Zanaris, you're going to find two more safes in separate buildings to crack for experience. The reason we'll be going to different locations in just a second is because the safes inside the fort take twice as long to recharge. After completing the safes in Zanaris, you're going to teleport to the Yanil Lodestone. The reason you're going to go to Yanil is simply to buy yourself time and not waste experience. If for whatever reason you're cracking the save extremely quickly, you might want to do the second save above the bar in Yanil as well. Then you're going to teleport back to the Wilderness Lodestone, use the Wilderness Teleporters, and go back inside the Rogue's Castle. Then crack the three safes. If you are able to travel from location to location quickly, you will get an experience rate over 1 million experience per hour, which is just insane. After cracking these saves, go outside and operate your Jenica's ring. Then use your fairy ring teleport and teleport to the Galaco cave using code DKQ. Then exit through the northern entrance. Then run towards the fort and redo the saves inside. This is the complete run you'll be repeating for 1 million experience per hour. If you want to get some items as an Iron Man or you just want another way of training thieving, you can also do Priv Thieving from level 96 onward. The reason I recommend level 96 thieving is because you get banished from a clan for 20 minutes after failing 3 times, and this way you won't have to worry about not being able to thieve in between because you'll have access to a lot of the clans. The elves from each clan give you different loot and different experience because the higher level the clan, the higher level the thieving experience. I was able to get 350,000 experience per hour somehow because I was using the outfit and some other boosts. Something I highly recommend if you're going to be doing this method is a attuned crystal teleport seed or the master camouflage outfit to teleport in between the clans so you don't have to walk around Prif. Also, this obviously requires the Plague's End quest to be complete to access. With that being said, that's the end of my 1-99 and 120 thieving guide for 2020, and I hope this one will stay relevant for a longer period of time. My older one had some mistakes and some information that wasn't mentioned, so that's why I made this guide. If you enjoyed or found that helpful, please leave a like down below, and maybe even consider subscribing, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.